Today I'll be showing you how I make a shorty heel tab sock on my circular sock machine. This time a 64 stitch circumference. This is not really a pattern, it's more of a formula or a recipe. And I'm just going to assume that you already know how to use your sock machine and you don't need your hand held through the basics. I will do some basics videos later, but right now I just want to show you how I go through this sock. This is the yarn I'm using today. It's a sparkle base and it came with these two minis, but I'm not using these today. This is from formerly, so I think it was West Coast Yarn Co. And then Marissa split off and started Rocky Mountain Yarn Co. and now she's Fantasy Fibers Yarn Co. So I lost the yarn tag, so I don't know exactly what this was called, but that is from Humpst. It came. So this is my Erlbacher Gearheart Circular Sock Machine, and I have the 64 stitch cylinder on. Everything is already set up. I have the setup bonnet and some waist yarn on. So I'm gonna get going gonna attach the sock yarn. I have it through here already. And what I always say is I'm very adamant about always using the, the heel spring throughout the whole sock. So we're gonna put it on and get going. Okay, so we've got this attached. I'm gonna put my row counter to zero. And we're gonna crank forward 10 rounds. Okay, so now we're gonna stop with our tension guy right here in the front. I have a blue spot right here. That's the center front. And I'm going to lift up the back half of the stitches. I have red marks on my cylinder here and here that show where the halfway marks are. Those are just done in nail polish so they don't come off. So I've lifted up half the stitches, then I'm going to lift up three more on either side. So this is where we're going to start the heel tab at the back of the sock. So I'm going to crank forward. put on my heel weights. These are the ones that I have. So we're gonna decrease five times on either side and then we're gonna increase four times on either side. I decrease just by lifting the needle up. Okay, that was five times on either side. I'm gonna lift the weights up and in. I'm gonna increase back out. All I do is push down the needle. I don't move the yarn. It sits in front of the needle but behind the latch. So when you knit, your yarn carrier forces the latch to stay open and then the latch grabs the yarn and knits it down. So we're gonna do this four times on either side. And four and we're gonna stop with our tension knob right here in the center front so that this situation is not in the way of us pushing the needles down okay make sure all of our latches are open you don't want any dropped stitches reset your row counter to zero you don't have to because we're just doing ten rounds but you know so we're gonna crank forward another ten rounds You can stop wherever you want. Um, it doesn't super matter because now we're gonna hang the hem. So I'm gonna take all of my weights off. Then I will grab the fabric down here. I'm going to start at a place along the back half of 
the sack because the front half has all of the short row stuff and it's harder to um, find the correct column that lines up with the needle. So I'm just going to find a needle and then follow the column down, grab one of the pearl bumps and hook it on and do that all the way around. Okay, now that we've got all of them hooked on, we're gonna knit around once to get those two stitches knit together. Now we're gonna put our weights back on. So this is the, the space between the cuff and the heel, so we're going to knit forward another 10 rounds. knob in front because it's time to start the heel. So I'm going to get my heel weights back on, being careful to avoid the heel tab that you just made because it can get in the way of, of the heel or of the weights getting into the fabric. Gonna lift up the back half of the stitches. And for all socks, but especially shorty socks, I like to do more than 50% of the stitches. So this is a 64 stitch cylinder. Half the amount of stitches would be 32, but we're going to push down another three on either side. So we are going to be working our heel across 38 stitches instead of 32. This is going to give some nice depth to the heel so it's not pulling across the front of the foot, but it doesn't make the heel end come to a point and have extra fabric there. So we're gonna crank forward and get started. So I'm going to decrease from our 38 stitches here down to um, 12 stitches in the middle. Adjust your heel weights when you notice that you don't have enough tension pulling down and continue. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, thirteen, and twelve. So I'm gonna adjust the heel weights one last time so they're all the way up and all the way in. And I'm gonna start increasing back out. The first increase I do by two stitches by pushing two needles down and then knitting forward. This prevents your heels from having little points on the ends. So I do the same thing over here by increasing by two stitches on the first pass, and then I increase by one stitch for the rest of them. So I'm gonna increase back out. So we went three stitches beyond the halfway point. So I'm gonna do the same thing through two stitches beyond the halfway point, and I will show you the one thing that I do different with that last stitch. Okay, here's the last one that we're doing normally. And on this third needle here, we're gonna push it down and then we're gonna take our yarn and hook it around back of that needle that we just pushed down and the one that's next to it that's standing up. And this will make sure that there's no little gap in the corner of the heel. We do the same thing on the other side. Push the needle down, wrap the yarn around back of that needle and the one that's next to it. And now this is the last pass, so we're gonna stop with our 
tension knob right in the center front. We're going to push down our needles. And reset our row counter. So this is going to be for a women's eight, eight and a half size foot. So I'm going to crank 65 rows between here and where I'm going to start the toe. All right, stop with our knob there in the front and we're going to do the toe. So we're just going to lift up 50% of the stitches at our halfway mark. So that's 32, 32 stitches out of commission and 32 stitches for the uh, the toe. I'm gonna crank forward and then get our weights hooked on. And we're going to work the toe the same way that we did the heel, except we don't have those extra stitches and we don't have to do the special wrapping the yarn around thing on the last set of stitches. We're just going to decrease from 32 down to 12 stitches. And 12, 14, 13, and 12. I'm gonna hike my weights up and in. And then we're gonna increase by two, increase by two, and then increase by one, back out to that halfway point. Right, here's the last pair of increases. On this one, we're gonna stop with the tension knob in the front here. We're gonna push back our, or push down our back needles and then we're going to crank forward until the latch closes on this last stitch before the halfway point and there we're going to stop and we're going to cut our sock yarn with a tail that's about a yard a meter 36 inches 100 centimeters this is what you need to Kitchener closed this toe across the top of the foot. So at that halfway mark, we're going to grab our tail and then get it in the middle there. And we're gonna add our waist yarn back in. And I do not use the tension, the heel, heel spring tension for waist yarn. So I want those stitches nice and loose so that we can cut the waist yarn off of the sock yarn easily. So I just tie it once and then I do a little slip knot loop thing like that. Then I hold it to the inside while I crank forward carefully. do about 10 rows of waist yarn and that's it on the sock machine if you have another foot make another sock once your sock is off the machine pick up all your stitches kitchener close the top of the foot and enjoy your new shorty socks with a heel tab